Good morning, folks. It's time for our Sunday morning lesson. We're coming to you from the house, from our home, because last night we had a storm somewhere between three to five inches of snow. And plus that, it's below zero temperatures, so we decided to not venture out into the stormy weather. This morning, I've uh, looked at a series of Proverbs from three different places, and I've just simply entitled this sermon, uh, The Proverbs. And we're going to look at the Proverbs and see what they teach us concerning our life and relationship with God. The first one is called The Fear, the Fear of the Lord, and the section of text we're looking at is Proverbs chapter 1, verses 2 through 7. And the scripture says, To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity, to give prudence to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and increase learning, and a man of understanding will attain wise counsel. To understand a proverb, an enigma, the words of the wise are their riddles. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Standing on the shore of a great ocean, one is amazed at the force of the waters crashing on the rocks. A vast expanse of water is uh, the vast expanse of water is awe-inspiring, yet it is beautiful. Only a very foolish person would ignore the dangers presented by the sea, yet only a fool would not be attracted by its beauty. The ocean is to be feared and respected, but it is also to be experienced. Despite our sense of awe, or perhaps because of it, we are drawn to the water, to be immersed in it, to become part of it. Our true enjoyment of the surf comes when we enter in, but only when we understand its power. You know, the same is true of God. We stand in awe before Him, very cautiously in the face of His power, yet we long to know Him, to be united with Him. The wise pursue Him with all their heart, while the foolish ignore Him or reject Him because of their fear. Once we understand the power of our Lord, this fear enables us to be with Him, to be immersed in Him, but always respecting His great might. There are several reasons we should fear the Lord. The word fear means to respect. First of all, the wisdom from God is beneficial. The wisdom of God is absolute. Nothing can replace it, and for this reason, we should respect God. To respect God is to know wisdom and instruction. To respect God is to perceive the words of understanding from God. To respect God is to attain wise counsel from God. To respect God is the beginning of knowledge. To disrespect God is to be a fool by despising wisdom and instruction that comes from God. In Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10, the scripture says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 7, the scripture says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. The next section of Proverbs we want to look at comes from Proverbs chapter 2, verses 6 through 9, and I've entitled this section, Good Path. The scripture says in Proverbs chapter 2, verse 6 through 9, For the Lord gives wisdom, from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. He guards the paths of justice and preserves the way of his saints. Then you will understand righteousness and justice, equity, and every good path. You know, Jesus selected for himself a band of twelve. People have considered them to be a rough and, and rugged men to be his disciples, mainly because of their profession. Some were fishermen, one was a tax collector, etc., etc. These men knew very little of the qualities of gentleness, compassion, kindness, and giving. Prior to Jesus' coming to them, they had very little reason to consider any of these traits. Their paths were many, but none would have been considered good, so to speak. None until Jesus came along. During the three years with Jesus, the disciples learned a great deal that there was to know concerning these qualities. They came to understand what Jesus tried to show them. 
They carried these qualities of goodness into the world and taught others to follow them. You know, if we take the time to spend with Jesus in prayer, Bible study, and devotion, we too can learn and practice these traits among each other and our fellow man. We will learn to follow the good paths that Jesus followed. This is what it means to be a Christian. The key is in spending time with God, time in His Word, and putting into practice the good things of God. Notice what the proverb says. It says, For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. We cannot attain the knowledge of God from anywhere else but from the mouth of God. God stores up sound wisdom to those who give themselves to him. God is a shield to those who walk uprightly. He guards the paths of justice and preserves the way of his children. In the proverb it said saints, but really that's what he's talking about. Saints and the children of God are considered one and the same, especially uh, through the New Testament. The only way we understand the right way to live according to God and live in goodness and walk in every good path is to surrender ourselves completely to God. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1 says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. And in Colossians chapter 1, verse 10, the scripture says that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Well, the last section of text from the book of Proverbs that we're going to look at this morning comes from Proverbs chapter 3. If I can get these teeny tiny little pages with my great big old fat thumbs to work for me. Be looking at Proverbs chapter 3, verses 19 through 21, and I've entitled this section simply, Learning to Trust God. And the scripture says, Proverbs 3, beginning in verse 19, The Lord by wisdom founded the earth, by understanding he established the heavens. By his knowledge the depths were broken up, and the clouds dropped down the dew. My son, let them not depart from your eyes, keep sound wisdom and discretion, so, so they will be life to your soul and grace to your neck. Then you will walk safely in your way, and your foot will not stumble. A businesswoman impressed everyone she met with her poise and confidence. Whenever there was an important decision to be made, she didn't even hesitate. Her co-workers came to her for advice and counsel. She built a reputation for her claim, manner, and smooth, level head. She installed trust in everyone she met. Once she was asked why she was so sure of herself, her reply, I grew up being taught to trust, uh, excuse me, I grew up being taught to trust. I trust that God always is always with me. And knowing that I can trust God, he will, make me, he will help me make good choices. Even though I might make mistakes, I trust that God will always bring good from them. You see, this is the kind of faith God wants us all to have. Life is less of a burden when we realize that God will be there to bring good from every situation. God is unchanging. His good works continue today and forever. We need to trust in the knowledge that God will never leave us or forsake us. He is with us in all things. He will work out for the good all things for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. You see, why should we learn to trust God? We trust God because by wisdom we know the earth was founded. We trust God because we understand he established the heavens. We trust God because by his knowledge and the depths were broken up and the clouds drop down the dew. We must never let the sound wisdom of God depart from us because when it does, we could be in danger of not trusting God. Wisdom, knowledge, and the understanding of God will bring life to our soul and allow us to live in the grace of God 
and in his grace we can walk safely with God and our feet will not stumble. A trust in the world and the wisdom of the world is a false and unstable trust. It is a trust that is only for a moment, a trust that has no substance for life. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, the scripture says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You know, it's hard to trust God when we love the world. We must learn to love God first and foremost. And then we can learn to continue to have and always have our trust in him. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, the scripture says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Well, in conclusion, how can we live the life of a Christian, faithful and dedicated? By respecting God and who God is. By walking in the paths of good. By walking worthy of the calling for which we were called and by learning to trust God and trust God completely. Let's conclude with a prayer. Father in heaven, as we come before your throne of mercy and compassion, we ask that you help us, dear Lord, to learn to trust you, to learn to respect you, to learn to walk in the paths that you have set and that you'd have us to walk in according to your will and your purpose. Help us, Father, to keep our focus on you. Help us, Father, to keep our focus on your truths, your word, your guidance. Help us most of all, dear God, to give ourselves completely to you so that all we want to do is respect you. All we want to do is walk in the paths that are worthy in following you. And all we want to do, we want to do is to trust and have faith in you. Thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you for the life we have in his name. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this lesson from the book of Proverbs, sermon simply entitled Proverbs, and hope that you have a great week, and Lord willing, we'll come back again to see you on Wednesday with our Wednesday night devotional. And if you've had some severe weather, just like we have, please be safe. Please uh, don't do any traveling you don't need to do, and please remember to pray not only for those people that are what we call first responders, but at this time of the year, don't forget to pray for our ranchers and farmers who are busy protecting those little calves that are being born. Don't forget to, to pray for them as well. Because I'll tell you, without farmers, we don't have clothes to wear and we don't have food to eat. And I'm one of those guys that likes to eat. <laughs> so have a great day. God bless and bye-bye.